When it comes to finding Tevin and Norton equivalent circuits, we can work these out quite easily with AWR. The open circuit voltage and short circuit currents are of course straightforward to find with a simulator, since they are no different from finding voltages and currents in any ordinary circuit. Finding the equivalent resistance, however, requires a bit more knowledge of the simulation tool, and this would be illustrated in this video. Let's start with an example from your lecture notes, and this is example 1 in section 4. We've got a circuit which only contains independent voltage sources. What we want to find is the Tevin equivalent to the left of the terminals A and B. The first thing that we have to find is the open circuit voltage, and this is really quite easily done. To keep the original circuit in the schematic, let's simply select it completely, and then paste it somewhere else on the schematic window. I simply use Ctrl-C and Ctrl-V there. In order to find the open circuit voltage, I need to remove the load. What I can do instead of deleting this resistor, which would also work, is simply right-click on it and select Toggle Enable. This effectively turns my resistor into an open circuit. Next, what I need to do is go on to the schematic and right-click on it, select Add Annotation, and then select DCVAN to get the voltages at all nodes. Click on Apply and then OK. Then Simulate. Now the open circuit voltage is the voltage between terminals A and B. The voltage at B is 0, the voltage at A is 5 volts, so our Tevin equivalent voltage is 5 volts. If I wanted to find the Norton equivalent circuit, I would have to find the short circuit current. Let's make a copy of this circuit yet again, pressing Ctrl C and then Ctrl V. To find the short circuit current, I simply have to replace this resistor here with a 0 ohm resistor. So let's right click, reactivate the resistor, we will then give it a value of 0 ohms. We then right click on the schematic and add an additional annotation which would be for the currents. Click on apply and OK. And then simulate. So now we know that the short circuit current, if we wanted to use the Norton equivalent, would be 625 milliamps. And if we wanted to use the Tevenin equivalent, we would simply have an open circuit voltage or a Tevenin voltage of 5 volts. When it comes to finding equivalent resistance, we have to use exactly the same technique, irrespective of the fact that we have only independent sources or a mixture of independent and dependent sources or only dependent sources. We have to use a test voltage or current source in order to work out the resistance seen between the terminals A and B. So let's create another copy of the circuit yet again. So first and foremost, we have to deactivate these voltage sources. There are several ways to do this, but the easiest way is to simply put a short circuit across them. We obviously have to remove the load. And then in this case, I will use a voltage source as my test source. So I will put a voltage source across the terminals here of this resistor, which is just one volt. If I simulate now, we can see that the test voltage source that we've placed on our schematic has got 125 milliamps going through it. So the resistance seen between terminals A and terminal B is one volt divided by 125. 25 milliamps, which is 8 ohms. However, we don't have to calculate this ourselves. In this case, it's obviously quite an easy calculation, but there is a better way to do this. I'm going to rename this voltage source VT. I'm going to move it along a little bit. I'm going to delete this wire and place a current meter in series with my test source. You can find this by pressing Ctrl L and then selecting I underscore meter. I am going to rotate this a meter so that it points in the right direction for a source and I'll also rename it IT. Then I will look at a different option in the simulator which we've not looked at before and that is output equations. Simply right click and select new output equation and let's call it equivalent circuits. Here you can simply measure a specific quantity in a circuit and store it in a variable. This is good because then you can use that value to do further calculations. To insert a new output equation, you have to click on this icon up here. If I hover over it, it does say output equation. So I'll click on that. So I'll call this variable VT. Then I'll choose the measurement that I want to associate with it. I'll go to nonlinear, voltage, VDC, and then select the schematic from which I want the measurement. I'll go on to the schematic here and I'll say, OK, the test voltage is this quantity here. Of course, we know that this is one volt. We've set it ourselves, but it's easier to just have it uh, right here in the output equation section. Then click OK and place the output equation right there. So we know VT already, but what we really want to measure is the current through that voltage source. So let's click on output equations again. We call this IT and then we choose current under nonlinear measurements, IDC, and we'll choose our measurement device to be the current meter that we inserted. 
then click on OK and place the upper equation right here. The last thing that we have to insert is a normal equation right next to the upper equation here. The normal equation does not draw values from any measurements. It will use the values which come, for example, from output equations to calculate a standard equation. In this case, I want to declare a variable RTH, which will be equal to VT, the voltage coming from the output equation, divided by IT, which is the current coming from the output equation. We also want to visualize the value of this new variable that we've declared. And to do that, we simply click on equations again, and we type the name of the variable we want to visualize, in this case RTH, followed by a colon. And this way, the value of RTH will be displayed in this very window. If we now click on simulate, we can see that the value is indeed 8, as we saw earlier. The process is exactly the same if we have any circuit of any kind with dependent sources or with a combination of dependent and independent sources. A couple of things to remember, however. If we had an independent current source here, for example, we would need to replace it with an open circuit instead of a short circuit, only for the purpose of calculating the equivalent resistance, of course. This can be done by simply right-clicking on the source and selecting Toggle Enable. Also, when dependent sources are present, these must be active at all times and must not be deactivated when working out the equivalent resistance.